High school wrestling coverage continuing on TV2, the new Philadelphia Dover dual match. We begin at 106 for the Quakers, Caleb Robbins, and for Dover, Gannon Petrullo, and they're quickly underway as Rick takes a look at the action from both the Tornadoes and the Quakers. Yeah, Petrullo with a real nice uh, slide by there for a takedown. Um, Petrullo is the heavier, uh, favored heavily in this match. I'm sure Coach Bullock is hoping for a pin here. He's going he's to try to hit that slide by. Nice shot. And I want to take him straight to his back from there. Good defense. By Robbins. No takedown yet. They're going to run out of territory, I bet. Let's see. Oh, ref says out of bounds. New Philadelphia finishing second in the East Central Ohio League meet last weekend. Dover finishing in third. Petrullo comes right back with that same slide by, and he's going to get the boots in and get busy on top. Robbins needs to try to build a base and come up. Ref doesn't like that with his shoulder, so they're going to call that potential dangerous and get another start. <clears throat> And I am confident Dover's hoping for at least a, a major decision here. Good job by Robbins getting out there. See if Robbins can get in and get a takedown here, maybe get things a little bit closer. Nice shot by Petrullo. And on that single leg, fight it off, wizard at. Oh! And he is in trouble. Petrullo trying to put the hammer down. Robbins, if he can slip that arm through. He's got 20 seconds here. He's got to fight that. And he will survive that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he'll be okay to get into the next period. Good job by... Robbins fighting off his back. A lot of kids would have gave up there. So after the opening period, Dover's Gannon Petrullo leading 9-2. It is the opening match tonight. And coincidentally, they begin at 106. And it was several years back now, Rick, that they went. It used to be uh, back when you and I were yeah. in high school. They always started the lower weight classes. They don't do that anymore. No, they draw a, um, a card, if you will, to take you to the weight class, which I think has been really good. Because back in the day, by the time you got to heavyweight, a lot of the people went home. And uh, so this is good. I, I think it's good for the sport, good for the fans. Petrullo needs to, he's going to work a tilt here. He's got that arm bar, and that's a long time to survive. He's got about a minute, and he does. Good job. Good job by Robbins. He's a gamer there. truly has got that arm bar again. He's going to take off now. He's got that arm bar in the wrist, and that is going to be tough to stop. But he's fighting. Good job, Robbins. Good job. And they're getting close to a tech fall here. If you're up by 15, the ref will stop the match. And it's not quite as good as a pin, which is worth 16 points. Uh, tech fall is five team points. So but I'm sure this is what Coach Bullock wants to see out of his wrestler, get some bonus points here. Robbins doesn't quit, though. He's, he's fought off his back a few times, Bill, and that's... Uh, not many kids will do that. I'm not sure the grade difference, but I, I have a hunch Petrullo's uh, an upperclassman here, and you can certainly tell. Petrullo going to try to go behind here. And he, Robbins needs to fight that. Nope. <clears throat> And that's 15 to 3. He's got that arm bar again. So no. if he gets any back points. Yeah. 
Let's see. Yeah. Ten seconds. Maybe he can survive this and make it into the third period. Yeah, Robbins is staying in there. He's staying toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He's not backing away. He's competing. Uh, of course, he's a little bit out of horse, but I like the way he's fighting at least. After two periods, Gannon Petrullo of Dover continuing to lead the opening match of the night, 15-4 to four, as they both start up with the third period beginning. Petrullo in on that single leg. And he's got a... Robbins has got to really try to suck it up here and not get a tech fall against him. There you go. Good job, Robbins. Good, good. What I like about Robbins, Bill, is he, he doesn't back up. He's, he's, he's staying in there. You know, he got shot out of bounds that time, but... Uh, a lot of kids, when they're getting beat bad like that, right off the whistle, they'll take two or three steps back. Now, Petrillo is just, he's pushing him out. Um, Rick, if you're Petrullo in this situation, how much do you play the I can take this guy down game, I'll let him up, take him down, let him up, and I'm gaining a point at each opportunity? Yeah, he, he can do that. Um, but ultimately, he really needs to work for the pin. If he's Dover... I know it's only a difference of one point between the team score, but that could be all it takes for these Dover-Philly matches. They're always close. They're always competitive. So uh, if I'm Coach Bullock, I would have given him instructions to get out there and get after a pin. Because right now there's a 12-point difference. And Robin take down and makes it 19 to five. Let's see what he wants him to do. And he's got that. Uh, that's a tough position to be in. He's got we call that a butcher, and that is going to be awful hard to come out. But okay, so he can't pin him. Robin did a nice job. Didn't give up the pin. He did get a tech fall against him, but. Uh, that could be difference in the match, though, too, at the end of the night. So the tech fall for Gannon Petrullo gives Dover an early 5-0 team lead as we get ready for 113, and really there isn't too much to get ready for because <laughs> there is no 113 for Dover. So New Philadelphia going to gain the points plus one, Rick. They just lost in the 106 match. Yeah, it's a forfeit like that is equivalent of a, of a pin. And... Uh, that's where he, every point here is going to matter tonight. At the 120, L.J. Lowry from New Philadelphia going up against Brandon Summers. Lowry second in the ECOL meet for the Quakers. Summers was fourth for Dover. Nice single leg by, by Summers. He's in there. He's got to get his head up and his back straight. Lowry doing a nice job fighting that single leg off. Some are still trying to finish that. He needs to step over that near leg and get his head up, hips in. Lowry doing a nice job fighting that. He needs to keep that whizzer in there. Nice job, Lowry. Good job. Good job. Fighting off that single leg by Summer. Summer right back in. Lowry going to score. Nope, not yet. Not the best shot by Summers, and Lowry's trying to capitalize on that bad shot. Lowry, there he goes, two. Let's see what Lowry can do on top here. Summers needs to come up, get out of there. There you go, up, out of bounds. 49 seconds left in the period. It's the 120 match. New Philadelphia's L.J. Lowry against Brandon Summers from Dover. You know, Bill, historically, Philly usually 
comes together some real good upper weights uh, year after year after year. I think their football team, it blends back and forth from football to wrestling. So I think if Dover wants to uh, win this match, they've got to score some points here in these lightweights and middleweights because I think when they get up top, the, the favor moves more towards New Philly. Lowry's that head lever. Doing a nice job on top. Nice. Got to break him down though first. Yeah, Lowry riding tough on top. And Summers needs, he needs to create some hip separation there. There you go. He's got to separate his hips there and Oh, he's got that butcher. Yeah, that's tough. That is tough. He's going to get out of bounds, saved by the bell, literally. Lowry will get some back points as the period comes to a close, and L.J. Lowry of New Philadelphia with a 4 nothing lead after our opening two minutes. I guess, uh, Rick, what did you like in terms of what you saw out of both those guys in the first period? Yeah, I really like Lowry's aggression on top. He really... Uh, worked hard for a pinning combination. Um, I think Summers needs to get back to where he was that first period and start attacking those single legs. He doesn't want to be on the mat with Lowry. Lowry is just riding tenaciously. Summers coming up. Let's see if he can... I think Summers needs to get back on his feet with him and try to go uh, takedowns again out of bounds. Summers needs to really come up out of, off that mat with a good first move, get to his feet, because he cannot afford to let Lowry ride him out again another minute 30 here. Yeah, and that's what he doesn't want to have happen. Lowry's got that arm bar in there. We call that a reinforced bar. He's going to stack him, and that is going to be trouble. Yeah, I think he is stuck. Yeah. L.J. Lowry with the pin for New Philadelphia, so after Dover starts out at 106, and the technical fall win for Gannon Petrullo. New Philadelphia picking up 12 team points in back-to-back -back matches with the forfeit win for Ryan Summers and then Rick D. Pinned by L.J. Lowry. Yeah, Lowry did a real nice job. That's very impressive. He worked great pinning combinations, and that was nice, nice work by Lowry. As we move on to the 126th match, New Philadelphia's Drew Lotzenheiser against Andrew Murphy, who was second in the ECOL meet for the Dover Tornadoes. Yeah, Murphy is a tough wrestler here. I'm sure Coach uh, Bullock and company are trying to get a pin here to get some of these points back. Yeah, he's going to work an armbar here as well. Yeah, potentially dangerous. You can't take that uh, arm up pass parallel from the waist, and when they do, the, the ref's going to stop that so no shoulders get dislocated. Nice shot, nice shot. Yeah, Murphy, that's a real nice, and that's all she wrote. A yeah, nice cradle, nice cradle. Andrew Murphy with the pin. We'll take a timeout. It is the Dover New Philadelphia dual wrestling match tonight from the Quaker Gymnasium. More action coming up next on TV2. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college, and yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are going to be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. 
You can create a lasting legacy with a gift to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation. It provides a safe, trustworthy, philanthropic choice for your estate planning needs. Through the generosity of area residents, the foundation has been able to provide nearly $5 million in funding for a variety of community projects and student scholarships that have positively impacted each corner of our county. Help your community by making a tax-deductible donation to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation today. WJER and TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not-So-Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. In the nation, it's not always pretty. But add brand new belongings from Nationwide Insurance and we'll replace destroyed or stolen items with brand new versions. We take care of the heat so you don't get burned. Just another way we put members first because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. As the area's leader in direct-to-garment printing, you won't be surprised by Denison T-Shirt Graphics' huge range of services, screen printing, banners, engraving, graphic design, and embroidery. They offer just about anything you can imagine, like shirts, mugs, hats, plaques, trophies, and more. They're located right here in New Philadelphia on the south side and on the web at denisontshirt.com. Government officials, business leaders, volunteers, and much more. You'll hear it all here on TV2 Profiles, exclusively on TV2. Hi, I'm your host, Cheyenne Carroll, and join me as I interview the Tuscarawas Valley's leading women. You can visit WJERTV2.com for show episodes and details. Welcome back to TV2's coverage of New Philadelphia Dover Dual Wrestling Action. We've worked our way to 132, where Logan Dusenberry for New Philadelphia squaring off with Dover's Ben Tristano. Yeah, and I tell you, Bill, this is going to be one of the key matches tonight. Uh, Dusenberry's been having a nice year. Uh, he's come up through the youth program. And Tristano is also a good wrestler. So this is going to be a real pivotal match. I think uh, they're evenly talented wrestlers. So this will be fun to watch. As this 132 is getting underway, we are four matches in from the team perspective. New Philadelphia, a one-point lead over Dover, 12 to 11. And sometimes when two wrestlers are about the same talent and skill level, from a uh, fan standpoint, it can look kind of boring, uh, but there's a lot going on out there as far as what they're trying to do. And they're both a little bit tentative. I think maybe a little too much respect for one another. They need to get out there and start clubbing one another and get busy. Scoreless in the opening period. Duesenberry going to try to go behind here. Let's see what he can do. Tristano, nice job. Tristano, another shot, but he's just he's not penetrating deep enough, and that may cost him if Duesenberry can catch him there. Yeah, they both need to open up a little bit. They're, they're, they're too hesitant, they're too tentative. Uh, into the first period. 
So as the opening period comes to a close, we are at the 132 weight class. Logan Dusenberry from New Philadelphia, Ben Tristano from Dover. The two rivals are scoreless. Logan Dusenberry, I can remember him from the youth league at Philly. And I think he wrestled 50 or 55 pounds. <laughs> they grow up. He's got a cradle locked up. Let's see. Uh, Tristano fought that off. Two different body types. Dusenberry long, lanky, a lot of leverage. Tristano much shorter, stockier. Probably a little more powerful, but Dusenberry needs to stay behind there. Tristano going to get an escape. So the first point of this match going to Ben Tristano from Dover. Nice shot. Nice shot by Tristano. See if he cuts the double leg. Dusenberry fighting that off. Oh, Dusenberry going to try what we call a spladel. The ref might call a stalemate. Let's see what he... I think he's going to call that a stalemate, I believe. No, Tristano going to get a takedown out of that. Nice job, Tristano. Dusenberry needs to come up, get that arm free, and get a score. 35 seconds to go in the second period. There was a stall call on. I'm not sure who is red. Um, I think it was uh, Dover. Thirty-two seconds. Dusenberry, it's really important he get out here and score before that third period starts. There you go. He's got to peel some hands, hip, get his hips away. He's got to get some hip separation. Yeah, reversal. Good job, Logan Dusenberry with the reversal. Exactly what he needed going into that third period. He needs to ride tough, and he's working that cross face cradle. He's got it locked. No, not quite. And that's going to take us into the third period. Great match so far. And probably when you broke down the matchups and the rosters of these two teams, something you might expect, uh, because when you look at what these two guys did yeah. in the ECOL meet, it was Dusenberry finishing in second in the league, Tristano in third, and right now one point separates them. Ben with that one-point lead headed into the third. Dusenberry, he's pretty insistent on wanting that cross face cradle. Uh, let's see here. No, he's not going to get it locked up. He needs to get back. He's too high around the front. Tristano's going to come out here if he's not careful. Escape Tristano right about there. Okay, takedown's going to win it for either. Or Tie, bring it up to a tie score if Dusenberry gets it. Tristano, a takedown would start to really give him some nice cushion here. So whoever gets his next, next takedown. A minute 13 to go. And Dusenberry needs a score here. Double underhooks. I'm not sure what he wants to do out of that. Stalemate. The score you're seeing on our screen is incorrect right now. It's Ben Tristano, four. Dusenberry, two with a minute to go. Dusenberry's got to step it up here. He needs to really go. He needs to start firing off. Tristano's strong, though, in that, in that position. And that, as long as he has that underhook there, it's going to be hard for Dusenberry to score. 38.1 as they come back to the middle of the mat. Dusenberry hobbling a little bit, but he's going to have to put that aside and get after it. And Tristano is just going to probably hunker down here and seeing a good defensive 
position, which is what he's doing. Ref is going to hit Tristano for stalling. Because he's got his head buried in there and doing absolutely nothing. 14.3 seconds to go. They went out of bounds. You heard Rick talk about the fact that Logan obviously hobbling a little bit. He'll have to do something here in 14 seconds. Now 12. I'm afraid it's going to be a little too late for Logan. Not quite enough. For Sano with a nice win. So a little bit flip-flop from the ECOL. As Tristano hangs on, what a battle between the Tornado Ben Tristano and New Philadelphia's Logan Duesenberry and Tristano finishing with a 4-2 win, giving Dover three team points, allowing them to retake the lead. And that'll take us to the 138 match. Bates and Bartz, it looks like. And I know the new Philly Bates, he likes to do some throws here. I saw him earlier this year, and he won't hesitate to launch you. And he's going to be setting that up as we speak. The first period of our 138 match just underway. Dover's Charles Bartz, New Philadelphia's Kate Bates. Nice takedown by Bates there. And he lets him go, lets Bartz escape. So two to one. I will probably mix these names up a couple of times, Bates and Bartz. So forgive me if I do, moms and dads out there. Nice low single by Bates and to a takedown. And he's going to work what you were talking earlier, Bill, about taking them down, letting them up, getting two and giving away one. So, and he'll do that just to try to build a nice, comfortable lead. Bart's trying that, what we call a tilt or a, a dump there. And he doesn't want to tie his arms up because Bates has a nice throw from here. Nice shot by Bartz. Nice job. Bates fought him off there. Nice. 14 and a half seconds remaining. It's the opening period. New Philadelphia's Cade Bates, a 4-2 advantage as the first period comes to a close. And that's going to do it. It's another close match, Bill, 4-2. Now, Rick, let me ask you this question. When you were wrestling, you wrestled up at the Lake High School in Uniontown collegially at Cleveland State. Was it more difficult to wrestle an unfamiliar opponent who may, not knew, who may not know your arsenal of moves, or was it more challenging to wrestle a guy you wrestled on a somewhat regular basis who knew what Rick liked yeah. to do, match in and match out? Yeah, hands down, it's much tougher, that guy who you've already wrestled two, three times in a season um, because you quickly learn their tendencies. I always like to wrestle somebody who I had never wrestled before because these repeat matches, they get tougher. And, it, and I think it is especially difficult to beat a guy three times in a row. That's hard to do. Bates getting a point for an escape. Leads five to two with the second period between these two rivals just underway at 138. Nice shot, he's working that tilt. Yeah, nice, nicely done. Barks with a great tilt or we call it a, a, a dump there. A really nice, nice move. And that is gonna change the momentum for sure. Bart's doing a nice job on top. He's gonna try to get those legs in and, and, and work a, a half here. He's got that cross wrist ride. And Bates, he needs to build, he needs to come up because he's gonna get hit for stalling here if he doesn't get busier on the bottom. Ref's looking at him, there he goes. At least he's, he's up off his belly now, which is good. 
And Bartz puts him right back down there. Referee should call somebody here for stalling. They need to, I'm afraid uh, Bates is, is going to get in trouble here. How does the rule book, Rick, define that? Yeah, when the, um, you get called for stalling when you're just not initiating any move. You're not attempting to uh, become offensive. Um, now, in, in this match here, you know, Bates is bellied out, and the ref's not going to let that go on much longer. He's got to build a base. He's got to get up on all fours and, and start some action, get some motion going, even, and that'll at least keep the ref off his back. 16 seconds to go in the period. Nice, right like that. That's perfect. Now, any thoughts that the ref had about calling Bates for stalling, you know, they're gone. Because that, that nice movement. Bates gets a point for an escape. Four seconds remaining in the period. Bates leading 6-4 over Charles Bartz of Dover. And you see the end here. The second period come to a close. So as Rick was alluding to, another close match. We had yeah. one at 132. We've got one here at 138 with Cade Bates leading by two points headed into the third. And it's probably a good place where Coach Clarkson wants his wrestler to be. He's, he's hit that nice low single about two or three times. There it is again. And he's going to get that to a takedown. Oh, nice job by Bartz. He was dead to rights there. Oh, nice scramble. Oh, Bartz with that, trying that same tilt again. I thought Bates had him dead to rights on that low single, but Bartz did an excellent job defending that. And these guys are both wrestling hard. The onus is on Bartz. He's down by one, I believe. They, appa they apparently awarded him a point. Yeah. At the start of the period, so it is a 1.65 advantage for New Philly's Cade Bates. Yeah, and this here is pretty much two, an even, even match, but this is where gut check comes in here. Conditioning comes into play, and Bartz is going to go back on that, what we call a dump or a, a tilt from his feet. 53 seconds to go. And Bates needs to get back in on that low single. So as they come back to the center of the mat, 48 seconds to go. Bates up by it one. Is. It's that same low single shot. And this time, Bartz isn't able to fight him off. And that is going to give Bates a three-point lead with 30 seconds left. And he better move up. 8-5, Bates. Hmm. He let him up, so he gets a point for the escape. It's now 8 to 6, 20 seconds to go. Yeah, I don't think I would have let him up because of that right there. I think that was a mistake. I think uh, Bates should have kept him down uh, because now we're going to go into overtime. 8, 8, 4 seconds to go. Bates trying to escape. Yeah, Bartz went right back to his money move, and that's that that barrel roll, or tilt we call it. Tell us what happens in overtime. Yeah, in overtime here, they put one minute on the clock. The first takedown will win. Nah, no score yet, no score. 45 seconds remaining in overtime. Nah, no score yet, no score. Nice double leg shot. Nice whizzer. Two. And in overtime, a big win yeah. for Dover in the lower weight class section as Charles Bartz with that takedown in overtime gives Dover a big, big win. Yeah, nice job by Bartz. He didn't quit. He kept going, and he scratched and clawed his way back into that match and won it with a nice overtime takedown. Nicely done by Bartz. Now in the team perspective, Dover's taking a five-point lead, 17 to 12. As we move on to the 145s, Lewis Huttrist against New Philadelphia's John Riker. 
Yeah, and this is going to be another good match. Um, both these boys are fairly evenly matched. Reichert has got a lot of wrestling under his belt. Tough competitor. And Hutros also, I don't know him quite as well, but uh, I've seen him wrestle earlier this year, and he, he, he comes out and he doesn't stop. So I'm looking for a lot of head banging here between these two kids, and they'll, they'll get after it. Our seventh match of the night, Dover leading team points, 17 to 12. They have won four matches. New Philadelphia's won two headed into this seventh. And Hutros with that go behind for a takedown. And he's got what we call a cross body ride in there where he's got that leg in. And he's got that, he's got a nice arm bar in there and that can be a tr trouble for uh, Riker. He's got to fight that arm bar off because he's going to take off here and run it. And he's popped the half on the opposite side. Oh, the ref caused that potentially dangerous on that arm bar side on the left. And uh, he had Johnny Riker in trouble there. 47.9 seconds to go. The first period of our 145 match. Lewis Huntress from Dover against New Philadelphia's Johnny Riker. And Riker started, I think, just a little bit early there. Jumped the jumped the whistle a little bit, which is fine. You get a you get a caution, so I, I that's fine. A lot of coaches will will coach. Hey, try to jump that whistle a little bit. And that was on the top man. He was lined up wrong. You have to have that uh, his hand on the elbow. Hutros had it a little too far in front. Our officials doing their jobs. They are tonight. Craig Clark, right now you see him hands on hips over on the one side of the mat, and the guy not in the picture right now, Joe Pozarek. And Riker almost had a reversal for it with a switch, but he unfortunately exposed his back. Hutros has that cradle locked up, and he is getting points, and I'm sure he's going to look for the pin. Hopefully Riker can continue to fight that off about 20 seconds. I don't think he's going to pin him here. But he, does, he is going to get three sets of three back points here. And Riker trying to fight that off, trying to hold off until that. And he is. He'll survive this to the second period. But a big swing there with those back points by Hutros. So as Rick said, he gets the back points credited as the period closes after one. Dover's Louis Hutchers with a 5-0 lead. And he will start on top here to begin period number two. The Tornadoes and the Quakers in dual meet action at the Quaker Gymnasium. Nice job, Riker, coming up. Hutros, he likes riding those legs. Let's see if Riker can maneuver himself out of there. Got to watch that cradle, come on up, and the ref will stop this for potentially dangerous, and he does. For the right. casual wrestling fan yeah. watching tonight, Rick, uh, define potentially dangerous. Yeah, potentially dangerous, like in that situation there, um, Dover was up off of his feet on Reichard's back, and if that isn't stopped, all Reichard has to do is just throw himself backwards, and uh, that would not be good, but it's any position that there's a potential of, of expected injury. The ref will stop it right away. Riker gets a point for an escape. 5-1. And in, in the world of sports, wrestling, statistically, you just don't see a lot of you know, terrible injuries because of the refs doing a nice job watching, trying to protect the kids. And Hutor's got that cradle locked up. Riker's going to try to fight those hands and peel that, but he can't do it. And that is tight. I think that's it. Another big win for Dover as they have now picked up four consecutive victories, two of which by pinfall as Hutros beats Riker by a pin. And Dover's now taken, in the team point perspective, a double-digit lead at 23 to 12. Yeah, and like I said, Bill, Dover has really got to take advantage and expand this lead 
before they get up into those upper weights, uh, 170 on up, uh, because Philly uh, will be ready to go there. At 152, New Philadelphia's Corbin Croft going up against Dover's Noah Tinlin. And just about as quickly as this match gets underway, Croft's headgear comes off. Croft, one of the seniors honored in the pre-match ceremonies. Tinlin with that face mask on there. Sometimes if you have stitches in, in your eye or on your eye there or a busted up nose, they'll let them wear that mask. But that mask may look kind of cool, but it's no fun to wrestle with. It's hard to breathe. The air, your, you know, your breath is hot, and uh, it's not comfortable at all. I, I always hated wearing those. But unfortunately, I had to quite a bit because I always get my nose in the way and get it broke. Nice shot by Croft. Let's see if he can convert this to a takedown. Go double leg. Nice job by Corbin Croft. Two points for Croft on the takedown as he takes an early lead 40 seconds into the opening period. It looks like Corbin Croft has a little bit of blood somewhere, so the ref will stop at and get him cleaned up. The Philadelphia trainer, Todd Steele, coming Matt's side to check that out. Yeah, Todd's been doing this a long time. New Philly's very fortunate to have uh, such a talented athletic trainer who knows his, his craft very well. Now, by legal disclosure, Rick and Todd work <laughs> together. Yeah, I should say that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And maybe his wife might bake me some cookies, I'm hoping. Now so, we, now we yeah. see Rick working. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going for. By the way, the guys in the truck, Keith Jokey and... Gary down on the camera. On the, they're not getting any of that action. Should, no. You have to sort of preface that. Otherwise, Jokey and Gary will try and have their hands all over your cookies. Yeah, no, we can't have that. No, no. And that mask is giving him some trouble. Looks like it slipped down on him there. No, nope, there you go. There you go. The score nearly a minute into the opening period. Corbin Croft from New Philadelphia, two. Noah Tenland, one. Tenlin gonna, he's trying to, I think, get a front headlock there, but nice short arm drag by Corbin Croft. That's really nice. And he is, he's gotta be careful he doesn't get too high. Tenlin doing a nice job trying to control hands, and Croft is way too high. Oh, and he caught him. He caught Tenlin, nice job. If you're Croft, and that is going to be tough to, to fight off. 25 seconds in the period. Oh, and this would be big for Philly. This would be huge to get a pin here. And he, uh, let's see, 10, 14. Tinlin needs just to suck that up and stay tough and survive this. Croft needs to bury down there, and he's going to survive. Woo. Well, and sometimes, Rick, and you know it much more better than I do because you know the game better, sometimes an effort like that at the end of the period, if it ends up going the distance and New Philadelphia doesn't yeah. get the pinfall in terms of team points, it can really, really become important. Oh, it can, yeah. And it's tough on the, you know, on Tinlin. You know, you fight like that for about 30, 40 seconds. It's, it's hard to come back from that. You don't necessarily, you don't get up the same kind of a guy because you're, you're very tired and, and uh, use a lot of energy. But uh, I think uh, Tinlin's a gamer, and he's going to keep chopping here and try to come back into this match. But Croft with a commanding lead, 7-1. Comes up nice. Nice stand up. Nice mat return by Tinlin. Croft got the takedown at the end of the period and then the back point. So yeah. as Rick said, 7-1 as they go at one another to begin the second. And Tinlin is now, he's the one that's too high. And Croft going to capitalize on that. Reversal, two more points for Corbin Croft. 9-1 for one of the new Philadelphia seniors. One twenty to go in the second period. At this point, Coach Clarkson is going to 
be coaching uh, Croft to get additional points here to maybe get a major or a technical fall uh, to help them with the uh, team score. So Croft needs to stay busy, not let up, and Tinland needs to really start fighting back here. Nice set out by Tinland. Croft needs to have in his mind, I need to score more points. I gotta, he can't be content just to ride on top. There he goes, throws in a, a boot on that left side. He's going to probably, let's see if he can, what Croft wants to do is pull that arm up over his own head. You'll see him try to dig that arm out, but Tinlin, yeah, nice job by the referee, stalemate. It's sort of interesting, Rick, to hear you talk strategy because uh, earlier uh, when we saw the match that went into overtime, Cade Bates of New Philadelphia let a guy up. He yeah. got taken down at the end that forced overtime. Then Dover yeah. won it in overtime in that match. Yeah, you've got to be thinking the whole time. And Croft just got a takedown there. Yeah, when you have your, your opponent on the ropes, you want to finish it. You don't want to let him hang around, and that's what happened in that bates Barts match. He let him hang around too long, and Croft with a nice near side cradle. Uh, he's that near shoulder. He and got it down. And the pin for Corbin Croft in New Philadelphia, picking up a victory by pinfall as we're nearing the midway point of the match. Team points, Dover leading New Philadelphia 23-18. to More great wrestling action between the Tornadoes and the Quakers coming up next on DMG Channel 2. The moment they hand over the keys, the day a house becomes a home, the feeling when your dream becomes a reality, these are the moments you'll remember forever. At People's Bank, our difference is providing you financial peace of mind and confidence. By asking the right questions and working with you, we earn your business. We know your family and understand your story. People's Bank, working together, building success. Tell me, are you confident in your financial game plan? Hello, I'm Matt Ferris, president of Ferris Financial. If you're like most people, you've probably spent a lot of time talking about getting your financial affairs to order, but for some reason, the game plan has never come together. At Ferris Financial, we're here to help you solidify your personal, business, and estate planning goals so that we can build a winning game plan together and help you achieve peace of mind. Please call us at 330-321-1413. Ferris Financial, helping you plan, protect, and prosper. Myers & Miller Podiatry provides complete foot and ankle care to patients of all ages. The practice was established in 2000 by Dr. Adam Myers and has grown to include Dr. Andy Miller in 2007 and most recently Dr. Jason Backage in 2010. Our core values of respect and honesty are the basis for how we manage our practice and we have grown by building relationships with our patients in order to better serve their needs. Myers & Miller Podiatry serves Tuscaroras and Holmes County with offices in Dover, Sugar Creek, Newcomerstown, and Millersburg. Let's get started building our relationship. Well, I woke up to the sound of silence in cars We're cutting like knives in a fist fight And I found you with a tear in your eye Your head in the curtains and heart like the 4th of July And said, we are not, we are not shining stars. This I know. I never said we are. If you're lost and alone, or you sink you like a stone, carry on. May your past be the sound of your fear on the ground. Carry on.
The more we know you and your financial goals, the more easily we can help you achieve them. Talk to us. Find out why so many of your neighbors come by and talk with our trained loan officers. Around here, it's all about you. First National Bank of Denison, member of the It's all about you. It's all about you. Tonight's sporting event is brought to you in part by Integrity Auto Sales, located at 1025 West High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Looking for a hot buy on a new car? To warm up your winner, give Integrity Auto a call at 330-308-9378, where every sale is made with Integrity. Mention this ad and receive a $100 gas card with any sale. Bag Sports Pub, located at 136 East Main Street in Sugar Creek. Next time you're in the Sugar Creek area, be sure to check out Bag Sports Pub, where good friends, food, and spirits come together. Bernays Italian Deli and Cafe, located at 222 Logan Street in Denison. Serving the tastiest homemade food around with daily specials and to die for desserts. Bernays Italian Deli and Cafe. Come for lunch and leave as a friend. Peter's Tire and Auto Service, located at 135 North Water Street in downtown Eurexville. Peter's Tire and Auto is a full service shop offering a wide range of automotive services and is a certified Napa Auto Care Center. Almond Incorporated. You know them as A&M Service Center, located at 1172 Tuscaroras Avenue Northwest in New Philadelphia. Tis the season. If you know your car needs servicing soon, keep in mind our holiday hours. Schedule your appointment with A&M Service Center by calling 330-343-3013 this week to help you stay on schedule for your holiday travel. Twin City Pharmacy and Gift Shop, located at 21 Grant Street in Denison. Twin City Pharmacy and Gift Shop has been in existence for over 50 years, serving not only the needs of Denison and Eurexville customers, but customers from coast to coast. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and closed on Sundays. Dual meet wrestling action at the Quaker Gymnasium. We are at the 160 mark. New Philadelphia's Cullen Brogan going against Jared Torch from Dover. I know I sound like a broken record, but this is <laughs> another very pivotal match. Uh, Torch is probably favored here. Um, but it'll be another nice match, and Dover really is in a must-win match here. As Dover needs to separate this even more. Ford in with a shot, but Torch with nice sprawl. See if he can change that to go behind. And they're going to go out of bounds here, I think. Ford in on that single leg, but he, he doesn't have the right angle to finish it. Staying at 180 like that is, you don't want to be there. So Torch and Brogan back out to the middle of the map. The two wrestlers scoreless so far. Under a minute to go in the opening period. I'm sure Coach Bullock would like to see a pin out of Torch here. But that could be a tall order here. Both appear pretty evenly matched. And again, like, like we saw before, sometimes when these kids are evenly matched, they get a little tentative. Torch with a nice slide by, and that should be a takedown. Oh, the ref didn't agree with me. He's getting paid the big bucks, though. Probably getting paid yeah. bigger bucks than us. <laughs> Could be, could be. First period comes to a close scoreless between Dover's Jared Torch and New Philadelphia's Cullen Brogan. And Torch says, I'll start down to yeah. begin the second period. Yeah, he hopes to get out, at least get an escape. And Ford is, oh, somebody jumped there. I'm not sure. Okay, they're calling uh, Ford on lining up a little bit in there. Excuse me, I keep saying Ford. 
I mean to say Brogan. Excuse me, mom and dad Brogan. Torch up on his feet. And Brogan needs a, okay, he couldn't return him. Torch with the escape. So Torch scoring the first point of the match, giving he and Dover a one nothing lead here at 160 early in the second period. Boy. That's a nice low single by Torch. And he's looking to try to get some separation in this score here. Two points on the takedown. Torch now up 3 nothing. Torch has a nice cross wrist stride, and he's going to take a bar and take off running. Brogan needs to really fight this because that's a bad place to be. Torch with a nice arm bar and he's going to run it. The ref's going to make sure it stays legal. And Torch isn't letting go of that arm bar. He's like a dog on a bone with it. He's, there he goes. He's got to break a 45 degree angle and right there he did. So the ref is counting back points. And boy, Dover's really hoping for a pin here, and they might get it. They might get it. 40 seconds left. Uh, and Brogan fighting. He's doing a good job trying to survive this. And let's see, he's almost out. Uh, 20 seconds in the period. Yeah, I think Brogan's going to be okay here. Good job. Woo! Nice fight by Brogan. That took a lot of guts right there. So three back points, and then the one point on the escape for Brogan. at 6-1, Jared Torch of Dover. Three seconds oh, no. to go in the period. Ooh. Brogan, nice job fighting off of his back. He wasn't going to give up that pin for nothing. It's a good job. Period number two coming to a close. We're at 160. Dover's Jared Torch. New Philly's Cullen Brogan. They'll both start up to begin the third period. I tell you what I see here. You know, Brogan, even though he, he had a tough second period, uh, he is not stopping at all. Um, and that's a dangerous opponent. When you've just beat him up in the second period, had him on his back, and he's right back at you. So head protection popping off for Jared Torch. They'll blow the whistle momentarily as he puts that back on, and our wrestlers go back to the middle of the mat. Torch in on that low single again. He's going to try to come up, come out the back door. And he should be able to here. Torch definitely in the advantage right here. The ref's going to watch his. There's going to be a takedown for Torch here any second. If not, some additional back points as well. Yeah, Brogan needs to give that up because he's going to go to his back. Brogan in trouble here. Torch trying to seal the deal. That half is pretty loose, though. He's going to try to tighten that up around his neck. Yeah, like so, and that's tough. That's tough. And a big pin for Dover as New Philadelphia had just rallied in the previous match to gain six on Corbin Croft's pin, but Jared Torch gives it back to his team with a nice pinfall win in the second period. And this is where New Philly starts to come into the meat of their lineup. I'm not as familiar with the Dover wrestlers, so I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage. Uh, but we shall see. For New Philadelphia, Logan Ford, the outstanding defensive lineman in football, drew more at the 170 spot for Dover. Whew. Boy. Ford with a strong 
upper body. Yeah. And a very quick pin, only 22 seconds into the match for New Philly's Logan Ford. Yeah, I don't think uh, anybody expected that. But sometimes that happens. So the Ford pin cuts the Dover lead from the team perspective to 6 29 24. Certainly brings up one of New Philly's stronger wrestlers in Casey Swinderman. At 182. Carson Beamer for Dover squaring off at 182. I'm sure Coach Clarkson thinks he can get some bonus points here out of Swinderman. Another one of the seniors honored tonight, I believe, wasn't he, Bill? <clears throat> Scoreless about 40 seconds into the opening period. At 182, New Phillies' Casey Swinderman, Dover's Carson Beamer. And he, Swinderman needs, oh, good job by Beamer fighting that uh, head outside single. Dover has won six matches. New Philadelphia only four. But all four of the Quaker wins have been six points from the team perspective. It's a nice fireman's carry by uh, Swinderman. So Casey gets the takedown, an early 2-0 lead for Swinderman. 42 seconds to play in the opening period. He might end up letting him go and play some, do some takedowns here. Because he made that look awful easy. Swinderman. See what Coach Clarkson and Coach Schlarb want him to do here. So they're out of bounds, back to the middle of the mat. 20.3 seconds remaining. New Philadelphia's Casey Swinderman with a two nothing lead over Carson Beamer. Yeah, Dover needs to find a couple of wins here in these next weights. Good job by Beamer. Nice hustle. Good job. Got the escape there, so they're both going on their feet. Swinderman's probably going to go back to that fireman's. At least I, th I think he should because, that. And yeah, here it comes. Yeah, there it is. Two more points on another takedown for Swinderman just before the opening period comes to a close. So it's 4-1. Casey Swinderman leading Carson Beamer. We're at 182 still to come. 195, 220, and the heavyweight at 285. Beamer chose down and see if he can get out for an escape. Working hand control real nice. He's just keep building, come on up out of there. Good job. Get to your feet. Get to your feet. Nicely done. Oh, ran out of geography there. No escape. No escape. And Swinderman says, let's start on our feet. So he's going to give Beamer a point. And they're going to go takedowns and Probably going to go back to his bread and butter again, that, that fireman's. And each time he's almost got him on his back right off the takedown, and that's what he's trying to do, that, that fireman's right to, uh, to his back and hold him there. Nice single leg shot. Beamer, good hip action. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's a little bit of inexperience there, I think, on Beamer's part. And a pin here for New Philly would be huge. Beamer gets another point, Don an escape, but Swinderman racking up points as we go. It is eight to three now. Swinderman leading at 182 with 45 seconds to go in the period. 
Swinerman back to that same fireman's. Um, and he's going to get the takedown, I think. But at least I don't think Beamer's going to give up any back points. I don't think. But I... Swinerman going to come out the back door. And Beamer needs to belly out and flatten out there. Beamer just, he doesn't need to give up any big points. He's got 15 seconds left here. If he can just stay strong. Oh, boy. Oh, nice forearm there by Swenderman. As you hear the buzzer sound at the Quaker Gymnasium, bringing the second period to a close. New Philadelphia veteran Casey Swenderman up 8-3 to three as we head for the third period. This would be huge if Beamer can just stay in there for, uh, even if he loses by a decision, which is by eight points or less. He needs to get his hips back, get his hips back. Swinderman in on that single leg. He's going to change off to a double leg here, or at least he should. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> They're calling the uh, for on Beamer, uh, I think, an illegal cross face. I, I didn't quite see it, but let's see what the ref is saying. Joe Pozarek, who made the call, and yeah. Craig Clark discussing it. And now Mr. Pozarek walks toward the scorer's table. Yeah, so no takedown. He didn't award Swinderman the takedown, but he did give Swinderman a point for an illegal cross face. Casey's lead now at 11 to 3. So Swinderman up by eight points early in this third period. And I like the fight in Beamer. Casey there, he's got that carry going for that fireman's carry again. He's going to do an arm drag here. Swinderman needs to drag that out. And he is, and there's a take, nope, not yet. Two takedown, I think, yeah. So now it's 13 to three, and they say out of bounds. So at this point, it would be four additional team points if the match were to stop here. 58 seconds to go in the match. Swenderman up by nine points. And Coach Clarkson and Slarb want him to step it up here and score some more points. Now he's got to cut to that double leg. So there you go. Oh, nice job by Beamer fighting. He needs to get his hips back. He's got to stretch his hips back. Yeah, that's just inexperience. He just doesn't know which way to go. Takedown for Swinderman. Now leading 15 to 4, an 11 point advantage over Carson Beamer. 15-4, the score, 20 seconds to go in the match. Yeah, and this will be a, a kind of a moral victory if Beamer can not give up any more points for the team in, in respect of the team score. And he's going to not allow any more points. And 15-4, Swinderman. So 14 points for New Philadelphia on the Swinderman 11 point victory. And we head into the final three matches. Dover clinging to a 1 point 29 28 lead. And for New Philadelphia, they bring out ECOL champion junior Xavier Barrow. He'll go up against Austin Ross. Yeah, Barrow, the heavy favorite here. Uh, Ross, I think, is only a sophomore who has morphed in his body type. Uh, he's got long, lanky, and when he fills in, he'll be tough. One of his older brothers, Mark Barrow, a tremendous wrestler here at New Philadelphia. And you see that a lot, Bill. The, you know, when brothers start the sport of wrestling, they beat up on the younger brother for a good while, and then 
Finally, younger brother learns it a little bit and turns out to be a pretty good wrestler. So Barrow, two points for the takedown. Up 2 nothing over Dover's Austin Ross midway through the opening period. Dover, a one-point team lead, 29-28, headed into the final three matches. Nice head lever by Barrow. 50 seconds to go in period one. Ross trying to fight that. Fight, he's get a bow. Nice job by Ross. He just kind of kept, he knew where the out of bounds was and that's where he went. So that's smart wrestling by Ross. Good fight, good fight. At what point, Rick, because it looked to me for maybe about eight seconds they were already out of bounds, at what point yeah. did referees blow the whistle and say they're out? Yeah, I believe it's when there's at least two supporting points of either wrestler Oh, excuse me, if both wrestlers break that line, then they'll, they'll, they'll call them out of bounds. Barrow getting three back points up 5 nothing now, 28 seconds to go in the first. What's nice about college wrestling is that out of bounds rule is very clear in that you only need one supporting point of either wrestler and you can continue to wrestle. Um, both, both wrestlers' shoulders can be out and you can still get a pin, you can still get back points when you're out of bounds or beyond that out of bounds line as long as just any part of a body is still in that line, in the inbounds. Period one, winding up, Xavier Barrow of New Philadelphia, five nothing lead over Dover's Austin Ross. Saw Dover football coach Dan Ift here earlier with his wife Jill and I said, coach, Early Valentine's is not bringing Mrs. If to watch <laughs> wrestling. I had to explain that to my wife tonight, too. Yeah, good luck to yeah. Rick, yeah, yeah. to Coach If, and to Coach I. <laughs> There'll be longer explanations needed when we get home tonight. Yeah. Borrow in on a single leg, see if he can. Nice job for the takedown. Ross just needs to, he just needs to keep competing, keep Keep wrestling. Like I said, you can see the length and the, the lankiness of Ross. And, and when he fills in, I'm sure Coach Ift on the football team will like him as well as the wrestling coaches here. They'll get him in the weight room and build him up. And really, Dover on the coaching side, really sort of a unique situation. Co-head yeah. coaches and Aaron Martell and Brian Bullock, and really, I don't care what sport it is, Rick, you don't see that too often. No, you don't, no, no. Uh, that usually takes a couple of guys who are pretty humble, uh, you know, about themselves and um, feel they can work uh, better as a, as a team than, uh, s you know, separate head coaches. So Barrow credited a takedown and escape for Dover's Austin Ross, 7-1 to one now, 42 seconds to go in the period. Nice single leg finish here by Barrow. Two more points on the takedown for the New Philly Junior. He's got nice, that's called a head lever that Barrow has. What he wants to do is pop his head underneath that arm. As you can see, that's what he's trying to do. Ross needs to keep looking away from that. If he turns in... And Barrow changes off to that head lever to an arm bar. And he's going to take off and start running to the head there of Ross. Six seconds to go in the period. And Ross needs to keep looking away from that bar. Oh, good job by Ross. Fighting that off. Barrow ran out of time there. So the lead for New Philadelphia Xavier Barrow, eight points at nine to one. As the third period getting underway, Barrow looking back toward head coach Dave Clarkson for words of advice with that lead as the third period gets underway. Oh, he's going to lock up a near side cradle here. Good job. Nice takedown by Barrow. And they're going to kick him out. Coach is telling Barrow to let him up. And at the very least, they, they 
Philly coaches want Barr to get a technical fall. So he built, he, excuse me, Rick, he built two more points on the takedown, gives up one on the escape and a whistle. Yeah, a little bit of blood, I think, on Ross's forehead here. He'll get him cleaned up. Although Barrow is in control here from a team perspective, this coming right down to the end, Dover yeah. leading 29-28. But as you have mentioned a couple of times, Rick, the uh, strength of this new Philadelphia lineup is the back end. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Um, and I wish I could comment a little more on the, the upcoming wrestlers, but I don't know them well enough. Um, I know... Uh, Verdon from uh, Philly is he's a real brawler at 220. I've watched him wrestle and he likes to mix it up and won't back down from anybody. Uh, and then at 285, uh, heavyweight will be Furby versus Swinderman. Again, you recognize that Swinderman name. Uh, he's been wrestling a long time, so we'll see. We'll see how these uh, final few matches go. Right now, Dover with a one point lead. As you see, Austin Ross get tended to by the collective training staffs from both schools and now back at it again with Xavier Barrow of New Philadelphia, a 9.11-2 lead. A minute 10 to go in the third. And let's see if Barrow lets him go, if he goes back to that head lever. Uh... Referee warning Ross on stalling, but you know he's trying to build up. I think he's he's wrestling hard. It's just Barrow is putting a lot of pressure on top there. 40 seconds left um, in Ross's defense. There's not much he can do when Barrow is parallel to his hips. And some refs would call Barrow for the stalling because he's parallel, but the ref doesn't agree with me, and he's going to call Ross for stalling there. I, I'm not sure about that because, again, Barrow is hip to hip. He has to move out to the side um, because Ross won't be able to build a base up. Barrow continuing to control, and he is going to win this match. Yeah. And New Philadelphia going to take the team lead after Barrow's win here at 195. So the junior, Xavier Barrow, the East Central Ohio League champion, Puts a win on the board for New Philadelphia in terms of points, 14 points for the Quakers. So they take a 32-29 lead as we move into the final two matches at 220 for New Philadelphia. It's Jeff Burden and for the Dover Tornadoes, Riley Warner. One nice thing about these upper weights, when you get two big horses and watch them battle, it's fun to watch. And you don't want to get in between them. Especially not when you're of advanced age like certain <laughs> people involved in this broadcast. Yes, absolutely. And either one of these guys can at any moment just tee off and... and uh, hammer one another, and that's always fun to watch. 32-29, New Philadelphia leading on the team side with 1.13 to go in the first period. Jeff Burden against Dover's Riley Warner. Burden with a nice head outside single there for a takedown. And he's looking to try to lock up a cradle. But he's out a little too far in front. He's got to come behind. Warner's got to control that wrist, peel that wrist off to the other side of his head. Now that's going to be a problem because he's got that cradle locked up. And look out, here it comes. Because if he pins here, the match is yeah. over in terms of team points. Yeah. Good job by Warner fighting out of that cradle. So the takedown, back points right now. Jeff Burden up 4-1 to one as Warner gets the escape. Late in the first period, Jeff Burden of New Philadelphia, 4-1 to one advantage over Dover's Riley Warner. Hey. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting if they go into heavyweight with only a pin separating them. That brings the first period at 2.20 to a close. New Philadelphia's Jeff Burden up by three. Each guy just a little bit tentative there. Kind of pawing at one another. Nice head outside single again by Verdon. And he's going to lift. Yeah, nice job. Two points on the takedown for Verdon. 6-1 for the Quaker senior. Uh, he's got a nice deep half on Warner there. That's going to be awful tough. And Verdon, that's going to wrap it up. I'm a Great for Warner. That's awful tight, but he's fighting. Yeah. And Burton with the pin for the New Philadelphia senior at 220. We've got the heavyweight to go, but that clinches the match because yeah. even if Mason Furby could spring the upset over Kyle Swinderman, it will not be enough. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of what we thought. Bill was just that, you know, the heavyweights have been just a little too much for Dover to overcome. That'll bring the heavyweights out for Dover. Mason Furby for the Quakers. Kyle Swinderman. Swinderman finishing second in that ECOL meet we've referenced several times throughout the broadcast. Both these big guys are in upper body lock, and ah, there you go. Nice throw by Swinderman. And that's gonna be awful tough, but oh, converted that to headlock. That's gonna be lights out. Uh, yeah. And the pin, only 34 seconds into the match as New Philadelphia finishes strong. Dover winning. Excuse me, New Philadelphia winning 44-29 with pinfalls in the final two matches. We'll take a timeout, come back, and wrap things up with our Bell Stores wrap-up report. It's all on the way as our coverage of high school wrestling continues on DMG Channel 2. Government officials, business leaders, volunteers, and much more. You'll hear it all here on TV2 Profiles, exclusively on TV2. Hi, I'm your host, Cheyenne Carroll, and join me as I interview the Tuscarawas Valley's leading women. You can visit WJERTV2.com for show episodes and details. In the nation, misfortune doesn't take a holiday. But add brand new belongings from Nationwide and we'll replace stolen or destroyed items with brand new versions. Making sure every season is the season of giving. Just another way we put members first. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. You can create a lasting legacy with a gift to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation. It provides a safe, trustworthy, philanthropic choice for your estate planning needs. Through the generosity of area residents, the foundation has been able to provide nearly $5 million in funding for a variety of community projects and student scholarships that have positively impacted each corner of our county. Help your community by making a tax-deductible donation to the Tuscarawas County Community Foundation today. Omni Orthopedics comprehensive programs provide early diagnosis and successful treatment for every musculoskeletal problem. With more than 30 years of orthopedic experience, their physicians offer patient-centered treatment for all ages. From evaluation to rehabilitation, your treatment plan is designed around your needs. Omni Orthopedics specializes in sports medicine, the spine, physical medicine and rehabilitation, foot and ankle, and hand surgery. If pain makes activities like climbing stairs, standing or walking a challenge, turn to the home team at Omni Orthopedics. Their mission is to provide you with the highest quality and most advanced orthopedic services 
so you can get back in the game. Located in the Oxford Medical Arts Building, Omni offers a full service facility including digital x-ray and physical therapy. So there's no need to travel when quality care is so close to home. Omni Orthopedics, setting the standard in orthopedic care. Hi, I'm Elaine Miller with Naturally Green Cleaning Service. My company serves both commercial and residential clients. We do general cleaning, spring and fall, empty homes to get them move-in ready, and final cleans for new construction. We use eco-friendly cleaning products that leave your home or office fresh, clean, and safe for you, your family, pets, or coworkers. Our focus at Naturally Green is to provide excellent customer service paired with outstanding work to build a relationship of trust with you, our clients. Having served the area four plus years, we have had many referrals and testimonials that you can access on our website at www.naturallygreencs.com. Our work sells itself, therefore we have never had any contracts even with our largest commercial accounts. Call us today for your free quote and see what makes our company stand out. Welcome into our Bell Stores Wrap-Up Report High School Wrestling coverage on DMG Channel 2 from Time Warner Cable. Bill Morgan with Rick Cole and Rick uh, Dover led for a good part of oh. this match, but then New Philadelphia, as you really sort of talked about earlier on, um, they dominated in the end as they won the last five matches against their arch rival, three by pinfall. Yeah, always a great rivalry, great competition, and it was a fun match to watch and to commentate on. As we look for our wrestler of the night, going to look to New Philadelphia's 170-pounder, Logan Ford. And it was Ford where that stretch of five consecutive wins got underway. So Logan Ford of New Philadelphia, our McDonald's wrestler of the match. And uh, Rick, with New Philadelphia trailing at that point, Logan came out and in 22 mm -hmm. seconds got the pin yeah. against Dover's Drew Moore. Yeah. Yeah, and that definitely got the ball rolling and got the momentum shifted back to New Philly, and they just kept it going and capitalized on that. So New Philadelphia finishing with a 44-29 win over the Dover Tornadoes as both these teams wind down the home stretch of the regular season and get ready for tournament action. New Philadelphia once again in Division One, as they will wrestle up at Perry. And you talk about the Maslin <laughs> Perry, one of the wow. uh, premier wrestling schools, uh, not only in Northeast Ohio, yeah. Rick, but anywhere in the state. Yeah, they won the state last year, knocked off St. Ed's, and word on the street is they're looking to repeat it again. So, yeah, just up the road. Great wrestling here in uh, Stark in uh, Tuscarawas County. And uh, Dover will go down to the Division Two sectional at Buckeye Local out in Rayland, and if you don't know where Rayland's at, <laughs> I don't even get a GPS. You better get an old-fashioned map because I don't know if the GPS will find <laughs> Buckeye Local down at Rayland, but that's where Dover is headed for tournament action. Thanks for watching tonight. TV2 always providing you with the best local coverage of high school sports this time of the year, basketball and wrestling. My thanks to Rick Cole. Our director is Keith Jokey, and most of all, thank you for watching this evening. The New Philadelphia Quakers knocking off Dover 44-29. I'm Bill Morgan. I'll see you at a match.